Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today, we are doing a Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom episode with someone that is very close to my heart. Actually, she is my bookkeeper. She is the solopreneur's bookkeeper by title. Her name is Connie Jo Miller. She is from Atlanta, Georgia area, and she is a new, as of two days, best-selling author. And I could not be happier than to welcome her to the show. So she's going to ask me some questions and we are going to talk about her book, which is titled Betty Bartholomew and the Vanishing Begonias. And it is, for those watching on YouTube, I'm going to hold it up because the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous and the book is darling. So I will put the link to the book in the show notes so that you can all go and pick it up because it's the perfect time of year to buy books because the holidays are just around the corner. All right, without further ado, Connie Jo Miller, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much. I'm it so is lovely to be here. Well, it's lovely to have you. Thank Will you. you tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to get to where you are today? Well, I started out, my journey is, is very uh, circuitous, I guess. I started out, my first career was I was a mechanical engineer. And then I did that until I had children. And then I was a homeschooling mom to two from birth through high school. And then I um, wanted to start my own business and I started a virtual bookkeeping business. And because of that, I met just a bunch of incredible women in business. Uh, one of the women in business um, is Debbie Keevan, who um, is, she was my first bookkeeping client. We met when I was an engineer at Kodak uh, over 30 years ago. And then we reconnected when I started my business. As I said, she was my first client. And then she um, opened her own publishing house. And she um, hosted a free write-in. So every Thursday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern, she has a write-in. And anyone can show up. And uh, it's on Zoom. So everyone shows up and we write together. So I wanted to support her and I went and I remembered a few years ago, I was talking to my daughter's college roommate and she said, we were talking about words and she said, I have a list of words. And I said, well, so do I. And she said, someday I'm going to write a book about it. And I said, me too. And then I forgot about it. <laughs> and Debbie started these write-ins. I showed up and it's like, okay, I want to write something. What am I going to write? And I decided to write about words. And then this story of Betty Bartholomew, I love alliterations too. So it just happened. And then I wrote the first book and then it's like, I have more to say. So I wrote another book and then another book. So there's two more books. So I have the series now. So that's how I became a writer. It was kind of, it was, it was by accident. It wasn't anything planned um, other than I had said, I'm going to write a book someday, but that's how I got to where I am. I love it. I love it so much. So are the other two already like ready to go to print or are they, they are in process? Um, most of the illustrations are done. The books need to be laid out. They're going to be available in 2024. Um, probably like May, October ish, something like that, but don't hold me to it. Um, it just depends on how long it takes, but, um, but they're well on their way. They're written, mostly illustrated and, uh, will be available next year. That's so great. I love it. And we were talking before how much we both love series, like book series, and mm -hmm. we were, we're, we can show our age, I guess that we loved little house on the prairie. And I was saying, I still have mine. Mm -hmm. uh, my set from when I was a little girl. And then I also still have my Nancy drew and you're a Nancy drew fan. So it, I just think books open up such an incredible world to us that you would never experience if you didn't read. And now yeah. that, you know, you have TV and you have the phones and you have all these things for kids to learn from, but there is just something so tried and true about a book in the hand and enjoying the words. Yes. And Nancy Drew was the inspiration for my first word on my word list, which was bungalow. The Nancy Drew, the bungalow mystery. 
Yeah. That was the first word that it's like, oh, I love that word. I love how it sounds. I love to say it. So that was the first word. And uh, it's one of the first words in Betty Bartholomew. <laughs> I love it. And you guys, this, this book is so, it's so adorable. Like the one lady's name is Mrs. Oboe. And then there, she's got like mischievous and um, let me see some of the like chrysanthemums. I'm trying to look at some of the big words because the whole thing is about words that, oh, marsupial and um, shenanigans. So some bodacious. So some of these words are just so fun for a little kid to be exposed to before they would typically get exposed to them in school. So I think it's just great. Yes. Yeah. Super fun. Okay. So now let's turn the, let's turn the table a little bit. And I want you to have the opportunity to ask me questions. Well, my question for you is you're a um, published author. You've done very well with the books that you uh, wrote and um, published. And so for my book, I worked towards launch day, which was Tuesday. And there's a lot of energy that goes into that. It's very exciting. And then it's done. And you're kind of like, phew, I'm done. But we all know that you can't just stop promoting your books or they won't go anywhere unless your name is Stephen King or something like that. So <laughs> what is your advice on continuing that energy and promoting your book and making it available to as many people as possible? So first is to humble brag. We, we tend to, when we accomplish something, we're like, okay, I did that, but I don't want to brag about it. I don't really want to tell people about it, but if we don't tell people about it, they're not going to know, they're not going to find it. So anytime you have the opportunity to say you're an author, say you're an author. And this includes meeting people in person, meeting people online and because they're going to be curious, oh, what kind of a book did you write? And then you can tell. The, the other thing that I think is huge is having search engine optimization on your website or, you know, for the book, because I think you probably have, because you worked with Debbie, I worked with Debbie, you probably have a, a yeah, website. Yeah, I have an author specific. website, yes. Yeah, which is brilliant. But making sure that that website is really full of search engine optimization. So even writing a blog post or two periodically about what it's like to be a children's book author or... Um, you know, what your process is, your creative process is for writing a children's book, but really putting depth of SEO on that so that people will find you as a children's author. Mm -hmm. The other thing oh, is doing great. local engagements. Um, anytime you have an opportunity, like with a local bookstore, if they're doing a local author day, be present. If they're like a lot of libraries will have local author days in the libraries, even do an do an engagement at the lo local library where you just do a read-in where little children can come or whatever your age group is for your book can come and you do the storytelling and read the book. And then the people, you sign it and then they buy the book. So it's mm -hmm. a way to increase around the holiday time. Use your email marketing platform to educate your audience that you have this book. And the thing about it is you, you have your, probably your author list, email list, but you also have your business email list. So don't ever hesitate to cross over into the other side because you're the brand. And as that brand, you can share everything about your brand. And so ed educate your other side of your business about the book and open that door that books are an incredible gift idea because they really truly are. And then of course, anytime you have an opportunity to have, ask someone, if they say they loved the book, ask them to write a review because the more your reviews you get, then the more, obviously the more, um, Amazon or other sellers are going to put your book up towards the top. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. Thank and you. then the other thing I would say too, is schools are, because you have a children's book, um, getting into schools to do. Uh, a read aloud or even donating the books to classrooms, but not, but then the children read them or even to a local library, they read them, but then they want to buy them or they want to gift them because they love them so much. And then mm -hmm. you can use that as a way to generate more sales. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's great. And great one idea. other thing I would say is if you know of any events that are coming up, um, you could donate the book 
and maybe a story hour for a birthday party or something like that as a donation item. Because if it's an, mm-hmm. if it's a silent auction, then people are going to see it. They're going to see how great it is. And obviously whoever doesn't win still wants the book. They'll go buy the book. Oh, I love that idea. That's a great idea. There's lots of opportunities for um, raffles or um, auctions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, I yeah. love that one. Yeah. And another, a friend of mine, a local friend of mine actually wrote a book and it's called Frog. That's not the name of the book, but it's, I guess it is. That is the name of the book. It's called Fully Rely on God, Frog. And Mm -hmm. she created a little stuffed frog. So you could Mm -hmm. even create a little lovey that goes along with the books. And then you sell that set. They want the lovey. So then they buy. Oh, okay. So my books have an animal in each one. I know. And it's an unusual animal that most people have not heard of. So that's brilliant. Oh, I love that Mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. One thing I was going to do was uh, have like a a printable cutout of Miss Oboe. And and this was Debbie's idea. My publisher actually was like, have kids take pictures of themselves with Miss Oboe in different places. Like, where's Miss Oboe today? And Oh, so, but cute. I love the the plush idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's almost like flat Stanley, Stanley, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like flat I, Stanley. I couldn't yeah. think of the name, but yeah. It's flat yeah. Stanley. Yeah. It wasn't I remember. the original idea, but yeah. Yeah. That, and that was brilliant. I mean, my kids uh-huh. loved that. We sent flat Stanley all over the world because we had foreign exchange students growing up. Uh-huh. So he went to Japan. He went to Chile. He went to Germany. <laughs> Oh, how he, went, fun. he went all over. It was so cute. Oh, I yeah. I yeah. Yeah. But that's a super, that's a super idea because then you bring the kids into it and they have something tangible too, even mm-hmm. to hold on to while they're reading the book. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Connie Joe, tell the listeners how they can connect with you and learn more from you. Uh, well, they can uh, visit uh, my website, uh, wordsofwhimsybooks.com, and that will direct you to my author uh, website, and you can purchase the book directly there. Um, you could um, also uh, follow me on Instagram. I'm Connie underscore Joe underscore author um, on Instagram, and you could talk to me there. Um, if you want to ask me any questions, that'd be a great place to do that. Um, the, the trilogy, it's a trilogy that I've written and it's called words of whimsy is the series name. So, um, because the books are all about fun, whimsical words. Yeah. And they are fun, whimsical words. And, And what's really cute too, is you have the definitions of the words on the opposite page that you mm-hmm. use the words on. So mm-hmm. it really is educational. And I always use books as a way to educate my kids. Like that was just, it makes learning so much more fun. Mm-hmm. Well, when I read a book as an adult, I always come across words that I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I can't keep reading. I have to look them up. And the other place I hear, hear a lot of, great words is on British TV shows or or like (laughs) British series. They'll say something and it's like, I never heard that one before. And I stop what I'm watching and I look it up. So I'm very curious about words and I've got to know what they mean. And I try to stick them into my vocabulary, you know, whenever I can um, use a fun word instead of a boring word. Like bungalow is a much more fun word to say than house. So I say bungalow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I just love it so much. And I think it's, it's just a little light to put into the world too, that we don't have to always be on technology or have technology to entertain us. And it makes learning fun. And Mm -hmm. I think anytime you have a a more broad vocabulary, it just, well, it makes you seem smart for one, but it's also, it's fun to use those words too. Like I think it helps you feel confident. Yes. Yes. And the thing, and the other thing about the books is they really are geared towards um, children who are still being read to either by a parent or an older sibling. So it's the kind of book that prompts discussion. So 
when you're reading the book and you come across one of the vocabulary words, you can talk about it. Have you ever heard this word before? What do you think it means before you define it? What do you think? Because in context, they get an idea maybe what it means. Um, so it's it's just a good discussion, not just reading a book and closing it and, you know, leaving. But it's it just can create a lot of um, interaction with parents and kids or siblings and kids or friends and kids. So, um yeah, it's just another plus. <laughs> it's another plus. Absolutely. All right, friends, that is it for today's episode. I am so grateful, Connie Joe, that you were here with me today. And I'm so thrilled to be able to share your book with all of our, my listeners and our community. And you guys, listen, like I said before, the holidays are just around the corner. And I used to always give books as gifts. And it's funny because the parents always appreciated it. I think little kids might have been like, eh, but they always loved the books and they would always say, Mrs. G, Mrs. Graham, I love that book. Thank you so much. Because once they dive into them and you they, and they see that they're actually entertaining, they really truly are a great gift. So I encourage you um, to think about that, giving books as gifts and especially Betty Bartholomew and the Vanishing Begonias. All Thanks right, so we'll much, see you. Robin. Thank absolutely, you. absolutely. And you guys, I'll see you here um, in a couple of days, probably live again. See you later.